Hello everybody and welcome to Renfrew Reviews and today we're doing another Hong Kong content review, this time for The Man from Gutter, released in 1983 from the director of The Seventh Curse, The Cat, A Rotted Ghost Story and Story of Ricky and many, many others. This is a very interesting film. Uh, I wanted to kind of explore more of his kind of, you know, filmography. He's only done a handful of movies, I think about nine or ten, maybe uh, give or take, you know, a couple of co-directed movies and a couple of short films here and there. Uh, I've seen the book end of his movies now, with the ones I've just recently mentioned, and thanks to 88 Films doing this kind of five-star treatments, brand new transfers and co-editions, lots of brand new extras. Very curious to see more of his earlier work and to see what other movies he has done on his library and uh, being the fact I've seen more of his book end of his movies and kind of got a sense of who he is and kind of re-exploring his movies and seeing what he's all about. He offers exploitation films, really kind of body horror, practical effects, nudity, all the good stuff that people want to see from the 80s kind of market, I suppose, and Western audiences, of course. And these are interesting films. These are films that I just kind of, I kind of clicked a bit more with. What was his early films like and how he got, and got the reputation to become the director that we kind of know and love, I suppose, in that sense of the kind of, you know, late 80s and early 90s. And I came across Man From Gutter, a very super low film, surprisingly from Shaw Brothers Productions, one of their kind of rare 80s movies uh, which I've uh, mentioned before that I'm surprised that Shaw Brothers uh, carried on doing movies into the 80s because you know Golden Harvest and a lot of these kind of rival companies were really kind of dominating with the Hero Bloodshed movies. This is interesting the film came out in 1983 because this is around the time that you know Jackie Chan was doing his police story movies you know you got uh, Sammo Hong doing his you know Eastern Condors and doing his kind of you know big epic kind of you know police movies in that sense but buddy cop team movies and this one is risky for not only kind of like Shaw Brothers kind of trying to see if they can change and adapt to the kind of the grown market and going away from the traditional kind of martial arts films period piece movies that we kind of know for what Shaw Brothers do but taking a risk on a director that would be his second or third I think debut I believe this one's a very gritty very kind of grindhouse kind of you know exploitation down and dirty police drama thriller and this one feels very kind of you know cheap in the kind of the best kind of way in the sense yeah this feels like you know it doesn't have a lot of money behind it at least I don't think it did anyway it didn't feel like it does this is like a what an 83 minute film an 83 89 minute film and it doesn't kind of mess around it has a lot of story to tell it has a lot going on and I don't want to explain every single detail because I think the film is very self respiratory in that sense. The basic plot of this film is you've got a good cop, you've got a bad cop doing two different things, you know, going about their own kind of, you know, styles and trying to take out the bad guys. You've kind of got a hitman, which is very ruthless, very nasty, who is taking out, um, who wants to kind of take out this kind of, you know, mafia, this kind of drug lord, kingpin guy that he's going on a mission. He's got reasons behind it. He's kind of, he's, it's very personal to him and his kills and his, exp his, uh, his methods to go about, uh, you know, taking out these bad guys is very kind of personal. It's very nasty. And there's a whole great sequence of a tennis racket where he's literally holding the guy to death for a tennis racket. It's pretty nasty. And then you, and then another side plot, you've also got a thief, a kind of, you know, a, a guy that's came out of prison who wants to kind of do one last big score with his wife and some friends and you know all these kind of little sub stories kind of all twine together within the kind of late second act into the third act especially so you've kind of got like about four three or four different storylines going on roughly and the film alternates between all these different characters and kind of the main bad guys also in the film it's a very simple film it's nothing kind of crazy nothing too kind of like complicated even though there is a lot of story going on you've kind of got your traditional kind of setups with the good guys the bad guys the good cop the bad cop the armed robbers and the hitman and how these kind of storylines all tie into each other. It kind of feels like an inspired kind of Ringo Lam movie kind of thing. I can see Ringo Lam doing this type of movie with like City on Fire, especially with School on Fire later on. These are the type of movies that Ringo Lam tends to kind of focus on. And just kind of see his take on that type of world, that type of story is quite fascinating to me. And I definitely think he was hitting on a a pulse at the time something that was definitely trending with you know police story around the corner and obviously a bad tomorrow the film is so unbelievably 80s it's like it's so desperately trying to hard to be that kind of movie it's you know with its music choices and it's kind of the way that people look and dress and talk and its stylistic choices are very 80s the film is definitively 80s in its in its attempt it couldn't be any more than that and it fits nicely within that kind of grindhouse kind of grungy kind of crime drama of the 80s world in a sense you know very hidden very Garden. It's kind of, I think it adds to the appeal of the film, I think it adds to the charm of the film, the fact that it's not got a proper good release and it's locked on a kind of, you know, shitty kind of format. 
um, you know, we're on the VHS kind of market. And I think with a really nice kind of five star release, like ATF films would be pumping out with like, you know, the Seventh Curse, for instance. I think this could get a second chance, a second life within the kind of home market. And to see another slice of the director and his kind of filmography, I think there's definitely more to check out of this director. And uh, the fact that he's delivered something like this, I think is quite exciting. And I'm looking forward to checking out more of his movies, um, what I got access to over the next couple of months. So I'm very excited for sure. That's my thoughts and opinions on the film, guys. I don't want to give away every single plot point. I want to kind of give a little bit of mystery, a little bit of kind of surprise to you, the audience member. If this film does come out on a proper kind of, you know, 88 film math fashion or kind of nice style of release, maybe from Video Syndrome, who knows? Um, I think this definitely could do quite well on the kind of the home market. Uh, so in the meantime, guys, after reviews, something out.